Hello and welcome to part two of Mission Two, Cut to the Heart. Let's dive right in. The Dark Kid. Hello and welcome to another Scardcast tactical video. I am Scarry, your grateful host, and this is part two of Mission Two. This is a Patreon exclusive that I do for all you folks. Today, though, it is a Patreon exclusive unlocked for everyone. So I hope you enjoy it. This is just to give you guys an idea of some of the cool extra content that I do for all the Denizen supporters. So the spire has been opened and you get a preview into what you can expect from the second part of these series videos where I go into more tactical depth on these missions specifically, talking about strategy, tactics, things like that. So let's begin with the first of the six different deployment styles. Remember to leave a comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and let me know what it is you enjoy about these videos and forward it to someone who you know just needs some help with ITC missions. And here we go with the first type of deployment, pointy hammer and anvil which is what we like to call it. Of course, one objective always goes in the middle. There's nothing you can do about that. That is a given when it comes to this mission. And it means that a lot of the fighting will happen in the middle of the board. One of the reasons I prefer to go as a defender in this mission is it'll give you more control over the attacker and uh, of the hold more objective. Being able to throw a little unit on the center objective to take it away, like an objective secure model, or if you do want to be the attacker and you can take the center of the board with prejudice, essentially. Now, something that's important to note is that in this, uh, the attacker gets to put the um, their objective down first, and it has to be nine inches away from one of the table, the center. It has to be nine inches from one of the table edges. So at its most, you could put it sort of like up here because the center is going to be within the deployment zone and nine inches up. So you're looking at about, you know, uh, from center to center, it's about 24 inches from middle to middle, um, you know, about 18 inches from side to side. So if you wanted to clump the objectives together, this is about as good as it's going to get right up on the deployment zone. Of course, if you're the attacker, you're putting this objective down first. So you'll know in your, you're putting it in your opponent's deployment zone. And that's one of your choices. You can either put it up there, up there. Uh, ideally, you want to try put it somewhere where your opponent can't really hide something behind it. You know, you, you get to pick secondaries after objectives are placed. But if, say, there's a piece of terrain, you know, right here, and you can put it in a place where it's outside of the terrain, that can be really helpful to just be able to shoot onto it and kill anything that gets put onto that objective when the objective is trying to be held. Another option is... If there are, say, one large piece of terrain here and one small piece of terrain, you know, is stack it on one side or the other depending on which way you want to come forward. Or if there's like a nice big piece of terrain here that blocks line of sight and you want to sort of jump onto this by charging out of, from out of line of sight onto an objective and it's close enough, that might be another good option. Now, as, a, as an attacker, it might not be the best idea to put the objective in an easily defendable position. Right, so, you know, and then along this line, you know, so anywhere along this line, pretty much, where, you know, it's nine inches away from, from the, the, the back edge. But if you're looking at it from that sense and you put it anywhere along this line, you're just making it very easy for your opponent to kind of hold that objective. So normally what you're going to want to do is you want to put it in a place that's hard for your opponent to get the most control out of this, right, in terms of that. Now, of course, if your opponent has a very close combat heavy army and they rely on keeping the objectives close together, you might want to try and force them to, uh, you know, have the objective as far away from the center as possible to help them spread out, to force them to spread out across the table. So say as the attacker, you know, you get to put an objective there because it's, it's not an easily defended position. As the defender, now you get to put your objective down. So you have a lot of choice as a defender. You can either mimic and put it on sort of this side of the table, in which case now, remember uh, if you go on to mission two, we were talking about how you can control the center here of this area. And then if you can control this area of the table as a defender, 
right? And you put your objective on this side of the board here. What you've done is by taking this area, you control all three objectives. And that can be very, very powerful. Now, it works very well if you have a, an army that can control a center of the, or can exert influence on a center of the table like this. And you'll see that it's very similar in the hammer and anvil, but it'll essentially add another 12 inches to the distance that you can kind of put the objectives. So you can really clump the objectives together. Now, if your opponent has put their objective here, and you can tell that they want to keep the objectives close together because they are playing a very aggressive list, please don't go and put your objective close like that. You try and spread it out as much as physically possible. So doing something along the lines of back here. Right? If you can split up the, the objective as much as possible and force your opponent to spread out, that could be useful in a situation where your opponent is trying to um, clump up all the objectives. So if they, I don't know, have a giant block of close combat in your face infantry or something like a Derrideo Dreadnought that has influence on a, on a, a to 24 inches or 32 inches with their move, where if they get into the middle, they can control basically all the objectives from one spot. You want to force them to make a choice and to spread out their army. So that's another option. But in this subject, in this mission, you know, it's a lot, it's, a little, you know, you don't have as many options in terms of where to put the objectives. You're either putting it along this line somewhere, right? So as a defender, you want to try to put it somewhere where it's easily defendable, somewhere where it's going to offset what the opponent wants, or, um, f you know, capitalize on your opponent's mistake. Like, if you're the aggressive army and they do this, then you clumping the objectives together is probably the best choice for you in terms of the army. But with that, that's pointy. Dawn of War. So let's dive in to the next style of deployment. And here we have the next deployment, Dawn of War, the traditional 12 inches from the table edge. The center objective doesn't change. That one stays right in the middle. So what are the options to putting objectives? You have sort of like a nine inch from one of the edges of the table. So you can put it all the way up on either side, right? So on either side, either this side or that side, or you can put it nine inches up, which means you're going to be pretty much like right on the nose with that objective. So it's going to go, yeah, so 12 inches. So 12 inches will be just out. So what it allows you to do is essentially slide it anywhere, basically right across this line, all in all, right? And then, of course, you won't be 12 inches away. So you could literally. Uh, you know, put it really close to the center objective, and the same concepts remain. So as an attacker, if you want the objectives to be clumped together and easy to get and in a position where you can rush onto the center objective and then rush onto the bonus point objective, you probably want to do something like this. Now, at the same time, you want to try and put it in a position where there's not a lot of uh, terrain so that it's hard for your opponent to put a, a little scout squad on it or something like that. So, you know, granted, if there's like a piece of terrain right here, you might not want to do that. So you'll just spin it off to the side or spin it off to the side just a little bit just to make sure it's just nice out in the open, very vulnerable. As the defender, same concept. You get to control whether or not you want to you know, go all in and decide, hey, you know what, let's just go all in and have a slobber knocker where all the objectives are really close together. Or you get to pick either one side or the other to sort of spread out the table. Now, if your opponent, you know, is, is a defender, I mean, the attacker, and they decide to do something, I don't know, silly, like put it on this side. In my opinion, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. You could then sort of mimic it like this. And once again, create a zone of control where you can get into the middle and control the three objectives or, uh, you know, offset it by putting it on the other side of the table and creating your opponents having to spread out. Now, in this one, you're very limited, where it's just, just along the line like this. So it's really going to depend on are there pieces of terrain where you can approach? Uh, is there a nice big L where you can kind of jump out from and get onto that objective? If you're on one section of the table, can you see and shoot the other? Um, can you, are you going to put the objective somewhere? Because you put it in your opponent's deployment zone. Right, so as the attacker, you know, if I, I put it in my opponent's deployment zone, I want them to be there because I'm going to rush up 
and get onto objective. So as a defender, I'm going to put that somewhere where I'm going to try and either spread them out and put them out over there somewhere where it's going to be easy for me to shoot them or put it close where it's going to benefit my army. So those are things that you need to keep in mind when it comes to this mission. On to search and destroy. Table quarters, the good old, another one of the classic deployment styles. Objective in the middle of the table, nothing you can do about that. That one stays there in this mission. So as the attacker, I get to go first. So what do I want to do? Now in this mission, you know, it really, the, the options for putting down objectives, because say I have this deployment zone and I'm the attacker, I have to go into this deployment zone. So what do I want to do? I, you, I'm either going to put it on this side here, where I can make it a lot easier for me to get from my deployment zone, where it's this to here. That's probably the fastest way to get to that zone there. Hopefully there's no terrain there, so it's harder for my opponent to control it. Or I'm going to be putting it on this side, where there's an objective, uh, you know, right here, where hopefully, you know, there's maybe it's like nice and open, there's nothing for my opponent to hide behind, and, you know, if I want to shoot, or if my plan is to move into that part of the table, or to deter my opponent from putting the objective here, because then if they put the objective here, then I have a very easy control by taking these two here. So maybe I want to deter my defender opponent from putting it there. So the defender, if my opponent puts the objective here, and they're more than likely coming at me this way, then I probably want to put it on that side or somewhere to kind of split up their army. And if they're putting it on this side, right, then there's two things. Either the number one, if I want to keep the pressure on that side and kind of, you know, make it so that it, it's not beneficial for him to come into my deployment zone so I have some breathing room, then maybe I want to put it on that side to keep some breathing room for myself and put it, you know, on that side of the board. Or if I have, like, deep strikers and things that outflank or things that can kind of move quickly around this side of the board, maybe I want to put it on this side of the table to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to spread you out. And now the, the, the game is going to be kind of like a huge line like this. But what happens in this one is that if it gets put into this side here, definitely a lot longer distance between the middle of the board. And if it puts over here, it's a lot closer. So you can visualize that in terms of how the objectives would be placed. And here we have hammer and anvil. Very similar to pointy hammer and anvil, except there are an additional 12 inches on this deployment zone right here from this side here and it's a little bit further away from the middle of the board. So the objective placements become all the way from here which is nine inches in from there all the way down and all the way across and all the way up. So if I'm the attacker and I was given this deployment zone I get to put it in my opponent's deployment zone. So what am I gonna do? If I want to keep it as close as possible, I'm probably gonna be doing something like this. I'm gonna be starting here, which means that I'm gonna start getting a lot of pressure on this one for the bonus and the center objective. So I want to make sure it's nice and easy for me to get to, hopefully in a nice open spot um, where you know my opponent has a hard time putting something hidden to take that objective. Now, if my opponent does that as the attacker, as a defender, I can either mimic it and sort of double down, be like, you know what? You think you're tough? Well, I'm going to be tougher than you. And now what happened is we've generated a, like a super condensed cluster of objectives where, you know, the cent that, that part of the board is just going to be an absolute slobber knocker. So I'm either going to push you off the middle and take all the objectives or not. And it's going to be, there's no, this is, this is a hyper aggressive counter charge push for a defender. Because if I'm the attacker, I'm here, I'm going to try push in, maybe take that objective. But if you can counter charge and push me off, it's going to clear the objectives a lot faster. But the other option is, of course, putting it back here, making it a little bit more distance to spread me out as a defender to force me to screen the back out. The same, bring it all the way across here. If I really want to spread the attacker out, I'm going to do something like this, maybe have outflankers, deep strikers, things that can go around that side and get over to this side to say, hey, if you're going to go up to my objective, I'm going to come around from there and come down this way and take your objective. So there are a lot of options with that. You know, of course, when in doubt, just try and put it somewhere where it's out of line, like where you can see the whole objective with your shooting and that you're in range. So even something like this, you know, if you say, hey, well, if you come this way for mine, I'm gonna come here for yours, you can do something like that as well. But what this does is it can, it 
because the extra 12 inches on this deployment side, it means that you can really clump the objectives up. This makes this mission very powerful for armies that have some sort of heavy close combat, a uh, big nasty character that can come in and beat you up, or something that can just really control a small area of the table, which uh, can be very beneficial, especially in this deployment style. And here we have front line assault, 15 inches up from the middle, 6 inches up from either side. Very similar to Dawn of War, but when it comes to objective placement in this mission, it can be uh, quite surprising, simply because there are a few um, things to keep in mind. Number one, when you're putting an objective down, it has to be 9 inches away, but it still has to be in the opponent's deployment zone. So, the center of the, uh, you know, you can actually put it all the way over here, which is pretty much on the 9 inch line like that. However, it can't be within nine inches of that. So it's going to force the objective to be a little bit further in. So you can't really go as far out. A couple of inches, but that could be a big difference when you're trying to put an objective down. So all it does is it now creates a zone where it goes from here to here. So it's a lot smaller of a zone. So as a defender, you know, you might want to take into account like this sort of deployment is going to really clump up and give you less choices to put the objectives in terms of that. So you're losing a good, you know, about three inches or so to put the objective. So you can't put it as close to this corner as you might like. Now, if I'm the attacker, and this is my deployment zone, and I'm attacking my opponent. You know, of course, if I want to clump up the, the objectives, I'm putting my objective right here, as close to that secondary one as possible, you know, nine inches from the deployment zone. Now, if there's a nice big line of sight blocker here, of course, I'm going to be putting it either on one side or the other, so it's a lot harder for my opponent to keep his uh, units hidden while taking that objective. But what I, my aim as the attacker is to control both of the objectives close together. Now, as a defender, my opponent's going for a close objective. I'm either going to force them to put their models on this side of the board to keep the objective safe uh, so that I can attack and, you know, hit this if it's exposed or put it on this side, you know, very, if he kind of angles it on that side, I might want to put it on this side to force him to sort of split up his army and make it harder for him to get that hold more. Because if I can take the middle going second and then or and then take that one for the bonus or whatever, it just exposes his army just a little bit much. But the biggest thing to remember there is you can always double up and go ahead and say, you know what, let's uh, smash it out or put it on one side or the other. Just remember, it's going to be a little bit more constricted, which means it's going to be more into the center of this area here instead of the entirety of the deployment zone. And we come to one of my favorite deployment styles, which happens to be Vanguard Strike. A lot of people don't like this deployment simply because it can be a little annoying to set up. However, tactically speaking, it is one of the most versatile deployments in the entire game. You can turn this deployment style into a hammer and anvil, uh, like this way, like push this way and turn the, the table into a hammer and anvil, or you can push this way and turn the table into Dawn of War. So there are a lot of options with this uh, deployment style. So as the objective placement goes, say I'm the attacker, that is my deployment zone. I got given that deployment zone. So the defender has this deployment zone. I have to put the objective down. Now in this one, I have probably the most options, which is really cool, because I can either put it all the way on this side, nine inches from the edge there, right and you know i can deploy right here which makes it super easy for me to get here or i can deploy it here if there's like a nice big open spot and i want to just be able to shoot anything he puts on there you know it, it forces him to not be able to take engineers right if he has something hidden there i can put it in the corner if i'm suicidal uh, or if i want if my if the defending army has a units that are very good at like killing stuff and I want to spread out out so I want the defender to spread out his forces or I can put it all the way on this side as well if I want to you know generate my opponent uh, and come from this side and I want to turn the game into a hammer and anvil deployment it just helps me sort of push into this side here to take control of this whole part of the table so uh, it gives you like so much versatility you can either put it that way so you can push into this side of the board this way or you can put it that way to push into this side of the board so very interesting. As a defender, 
if my opponent puts something like that, you know, if I want to make sure that all the objectives are really close together, yeah, I'm probably going to put it right here, right, and give me a choice there. As a defender, I know this is my deployment zone, so I can go, you know what, let's double down and put it here, because I need to push that way as well. But if, you know, we're going to be having a face-off, it means that if I put stuff back here and you send anything back here, it has no real relevance to the game. So if I have a good firebase as a defender, I can say, okay, you put my objective there, I'm going to put yours there. I'm not going to put it there, because if you have anything there, it could threaten anything I want here. But I want all my shooting units back here. So if you bring anything back here, it's not really helping the objectives game. So I can have a superiority in terms of shooting. Just little things like that you can keep in mind. If I want him to spread out and uh, try and you know make sure that he doesn't have a lot of options, I could do something like that to spread him out as much as possible so that you know it's harder for him to control all the objectives. So just something to keep in mind. But I hope that this has been useful and interesting to you as mission two is one of the most intricate yet simple missions simply because of the low amount of objectives on the table. If you're going second as a defender, you know, a good couple of secondary choices could be, um, especially if you get control of, as a defender and you can clump all the objectives together, Something like ground control could be very useful as you get the last grab on objectives of the defender and you can either force the clump or force the expansion of it as well. I hope you enjoyed part two of the mission series. This mission is a very interesting uh, technical mission where, you know, because there are only three objectives, it can really change the way the game works so let me know with a comment down below which is your favorite deployment style when you're the attacker and which is your favorite deployment style when you're the defender you know are there specific situations where you want to clump up all your objectives or are certain situations where you'd like to spread out all your objectives objectives and is there any point here where you said you know what Skari that made a lot of sense or hey I never really thought about that let me know with a comment in the description I'm always curious to see how I have helped you get better at the game thanks a lot for tuning in I've been Skari your grateful host and I'll see you next week with mission three Skari out bye